Hello, my name is Herman Kelly, I'm President of the Irish Freedom Party. I'd like to talk today about something which is very close to my heart since I was a little kid. Uh, I hooked my first salmon about, must have been about eight or nine. And now I'm a little bit older, I'm 53, I have lots of experience. I studied marine biology for a while. I have had a lifelong interest in salmon and the ecology to do with uh, salmon, uh, the waters, etc. For a very long time, I think I have some long distilled knowledge about this topic, which I'd like to share with everybody. Because this summer, as we have all noticed, or many people have noticed, that there's lots of water, but very few salmon. So 2000, where 2020, COVID year, when there was no boats working at sea, there was a huge run, run of salmon, not only in Ireland and Scotland, but around Europe for the first time in a long time. We find ourselves in 2023 where the fantastic water, July was the wettest, wettest July in record in Ireland, and yet very, very few salmon. I want to go over a few of the points that relate to it. I'll start with the biggest one first. I'll start with unusually, I won't start with uh, the rivers, I'll start at sea. Because, just straight to the point, Bushmills International Salmon Research Centre up in County Andrum has found that roughly there's been a, where smolt return 30 years ago used to be roughly 25% of all smolt would return, now it's about 2.5%. So there's been a huge fall in uh, the rate, of ten, basically a tenfold fall in the rate of smolt return from the ocean. So there's obviously and clearly a huge problem at sea. Now, I was speaking to a man there recently who's involved with the North American, the North American Salmon Conservation Association or so, NASCO. Basically, from the moment that the salmon leave the rivers as smolts, there's a huge problem. First one that they come up against, and which our Irish government have an influence on, is that of salmon farms. Now, all along the west coast of Ireland, there are a large number of salmon farms. Now, these salmon farms are reservoirs of disease and pollution. The shit that the salmon eat this feed, the shit in the waters below, below the salmon farm, if you've ever seen them in footage, is what they call the dead zone, where it's just a cocktail of salmon shit and strong chemicals which destroy and kill everything below it. Another major problem is seed lice infestation. Now the chemicals that they use to stop seed lice infestation are very powerful and do a lot of damage to the environment. I would call this not farm salmon but pharma salmon because the huge amount of chemicals that are pumped in to, to an attempt to keep high density salmon in housed in a very confined area, disease free, is virtually impossible. I would suggest that the way to stop this sea, le sea lice infested, chemical polluting, shit dumping uh, salmon farms is for the Irish government to withdraw all licenses for salmon farms in the west coast of Ireland where smolt smolts run past. Uh, they are, especially on young smolts, the sea lice do a huge amount of damage. They reduce the numbers, even just as they're getting started off in their journey to sea, they're getting virtually eaten alive by sea lice. So if the Irish government is interested in bringing back salmon to Ireland, encouraging tourism back to Ireland, it needs to stop the, the low employment the low number of jobs that are really given to, uh, that are produced by salmon farms, completely different from what we were told 30 and 40 years ago, when I was actually very interested in this topic very early on. They're a disaster and they need to stop. So the first thing we can do is stop sea lice and infestation of smolts by salmon farms along the coast of Ireland by withdrawing salmon license, licenses from these salmon farms. And two, a second point is, well, the, the salmon produced there is very unhealthy. It's not good. It's, uh, the flesh has to be dyed, um, and it's very bad for you. So, like, on a health perspective, a human health perspective, and also a biological, ecological perspective uh, from 
the, the sea, uh, salmon farms are very destructive. There is an alternative, which is to have enclosed salmon farms where the water is purified. It can be done using uh, seawater. It can be done on land, and that water recycled, purified again and again. It is much cleaner, is much healthier, uh, healthier for the salmon and healthier for the environment. So there is an alternative. Second point, let's say, just speaking very generally, uh, the salmon that leave the west coast of Ireland head up towards Greenland, and there's a large channel which they go up. And then the salmon on the east coast of Ireland uh, go up towards uh, up the northern coast of Norway. Now, there's been a real fall in the east coast uh, salmon numbers for many decades, and there is a lot of speculation that there's for two reasons. One is that uh, Norwegians have a huge sand eel fishery, which consumes a lot of the fish, sorry, the sand eels, which the salmon would eat. The Norwegians also have a huge krill industry, so they're taking up the food that salmon would eat, which is sand eels and krill. And the Norwegians also have a huge number of salmon farms, a real colossal number of salmon farms when compared to Ireland. And once again, you have that sea lice infested chemical soup just beside these salmon farms which do a lot of damage to any passing salmon. One aspect which is brought up by a biologist Jens Christian Jens, uh, basically his idea that this channel that runs from the west of Ireland up towards Greenland that there's a huge overpopulation of mackerel and a fisherman told me also blue whiting blue whiting and mackerel are hugely, there's a huge overpopulation of them these mackerel, large mackerel, eat the smolts uh, as, they're, as they're going north. And uh, so it wouldn't do any harm to have a, a thorough, ecologically balanced harvesting of mackerel and blue whiting in this channel which the smolts travel up to. Uh, this mackerel and blue whiting can easily be consumed by humans and uh, but there is an under-harvesting of mackerel in this large channel in which uh, the mackerel eat a lot of smolts. So that is a big, big problem. So there, I, I think, is the outline of there in general is a large ecological disbalance in the ocean at the moment. There's a lack of food, but it's particularly compounded by the huge Norwegian fishery of sand eels on krill and the infestation with salmon farms in the west coast of Norway and the Faroe Islands as well. And so if we stopped the overpopulation of mackerel and blue whiting uh, up towards the Faroe Islands and, and Green, uh, Greenland, uh, the salmon would have better chance to survive and sea and be fed and be able to come back. Because as I said, the findings from the Bush International Salmon Research Station is there has been a huge tenfold fall in return of uh, smolts from sea. So that's incre incredibly damaging. So second point I want to talk about now is uh, the problems at, in the rivers. Now, very often people think about salmon and uh, it's all to do with small production, but it's not quite as simple as that. So I, as I say, I think a major factor at this moment in time is uh, the problems at sea. But we, there's a lot of problems at the ocean. There's a lot of solutions that, that can be produced for, to help the production of sm salmon smolts in the rivers. One is the problem wa with water purity, the water quality. EPA has shown conclusively with research over the last number of years that there's been a sharp fall in water quality in Irish rivers. Uh, less than half of the rivers in Ireland now would be classed as good quality water. Uh, the main reasons for this is the high preponderance of nitrogen and phosphorus in the water caused by nitrates from fertilizer and phosphates from uh, sewage. Uh, so those two aspects, the agricultural input of uh, Fertilizers, uh, silage put on at the wrong time in the wrong way, and human shit being pumped into the, into the rivers, insufficient size and efficiency of septic tanks. So if we want good rivers, people will have to pay to get the septic proper 
efficiently working, properly sized septic tanks on their property to prevent phosphates from human shit being pumped into rivers. Also, farmers have their part to play, will have their part to play, are putting on fertilizer at the, in the wrong way at the wrong time of the year through the wrong method. That can all be fixed. Uh, but it is an, water quality is important. Another aspect of water quality is the whole loss of insect life. Uh, I believe over the last 50 years there's been a 70% reduction and a 50% reduction in general insect life in, in Europe in general. So there's less flies, etc., for the trout and salmon to eat, so that's clearly a problem, but it is related water quality. It's also related to pesticides. Pests, they do a lot of damage. They, we're not so smart that we can just pinpoint one aspect of the ecosystem and, and think that everything else is going to be okay. That's simply not the point. So there has to be some alternative or reduction and an alternative to the pesticides that are currently being used in the fashion in which they are being used. So pesticides is a big problem. Other problems in the river have to do with predators. Now, Cormorants, the birds and goosanders, their population has increased dramatically. Those population of birds, which maybe even 50 years ago kind of hang around, hung around the estuaries of the rivers, are now in some cases 40, 40 miles up the river, right into the spot, like virtually into the spawning beds. These uh, cormorants, for, for example, can eat 20 smolts per day. They are basically... So fishermen or salmon uh, smolts are in competition, competing for life with these cormorants, which are efficient smolt chompers um, with such a huge appetite for salmon. And their numbers have increased. At the minute, these, and I believe they're, they are non-native birds. They come from Southeast Asia originally. I don't know why they're here in Ireland anyway, why they're classed, uh, where, the, where they're allowed to be a protected species. I believe they should not be, that uh, they're not a, they are an invasive species, they're not a native species, and I believe they should be wiped out because they do no good. They're, th th without a predator, they have, their populations have exploded and they, they do a lot of damage on the ecosystem of river. So that's Gersander and cormorants are doing a lot of damage. At closer to sea are seals. Now everybody, especially lay people with no interest or knowledge or experience of rivers or estuaries, etc., think, oh yeah, they look like little puppies. Oh, seals without a predator do... Now if there was other things to predate on them, it would be okay. But there's no predators above the seal, so the seal population has greatly increased as well, and they do damage to the uh, salmon and trout population of Ireland. So I, I think it wouldn't do any harm to have a to at least look and check the population of of, of seals, and if it has to be reduced, that the population of seals be reduced. Now I think that's a very quick run through summary of uh, the main problems that we have in the rivers and at seas. It is very large problems, but human input uh, and, for example, our individual input to do make sure that we have proper septic tanks at home and our sewage systems are working properly. It's a very individual thing. We all have our input, just as the government, through legislation, can uh, change the environment uh, to, for example, as I gave, withdraw licenses for these polluting uh, salmon farms and have negotiations, international negotiations with other countries to try to increase the quota for mackerel and bluefin in that channel going past the Far Faroe Islands and up towards Greenland that uh, to give traveling smolts a living chance of arriving there so they can feed to make sure that the feeding at sea is better by reducing sand eel and krill fisheries in Norway and also all around to reduce the number of salmon farms which are polluting off both Scotland and 
uh, Norway in huge numbers. And we also have our part to play farmers and individual household owners have their part to play with the, when it has to do with pesticides, uh, fertilizers, and uh, human, uh, human waste uh, from which pours into the rivers eventually. So that is me. That's now one thing, another, let's say it's passed over very quietly in Ireland because there is clearly a fashion among fishing biologists at the minute to oppose, to oppose uh, salmon hatcheries. Now the population has gone down so low, their argument that it would impact detrimentally the genetic diversity of uh, salmon doesn't carry as much weight. Why? Because the population has gone down so low that the, the, the mixing of genes from the, uh, from the salmon is going to be severely reduced. So I do believe that as long as we take precautions that we only use brood stock from the river in which the salmon are placed back, the, the par, etc., are placed back, that uh, we must, if we ensure that we only take brood stock from the rivers and streams to which those older par are, are put back, that we can maintain the genetic diversity and uniqueness of all the streams and rivers that we have in Ireland, but that we do need to increase the numbers. Rivers have a certain maximum production potential. Uh, and given that the returns from sea is so low, I believe that we do have to be working at maximum potential for, for rivers that we that to give salmon a fighting chance at all. And in regard, so I do believe there's a very strong case that can be made for salmon hatcheries and that there's sufficient care to ensure the wide cross fertilization. It, it's very doable. It's very simple to do. So it's, if there is problems with uh, genetics, uh, it can be solved quite uh, simply. And I do believe that uh, the whole thing, instead of putting in smolts at a very late stage, that the power can be put in with a year to go or so, to give them time to acclimatize, that those who are strongest in nature survive and thrive and be able to go to sea. Uh, so it's not just salmon hatchery isn't for a completely artificial environment, but we must also allow, allow the fittest in nature to survive and, uh, and to reproduce and therefore put them in maybe after two years rather than as, as smolts uh, to allow the whole testing in nature, or the fitness of these uh, par. As a sports fishing man myself, who has also had experience of my first adult job was working on a half dagger fishing for salmon with monofilament nets out of Greencastle when I was 16. But I do believe, I'm glad those days have ended. There's simply not the population to return to the netting uh, days. There just simply isn't the population. If we make an effort, hopefully someday there will be an excess of salmon, but it certainly doesn't exist. It's nowhere near happening at the minute. But I, I will say one thing about uh, catch and release, I believe it makes very little difference. And I believe closing, river, closing rivers, as has been the practice of the IFI over the last number of years, just hands those rivers over to poachers. Uh, it, it must be, there must be an attempt under all circumstances to keep all the rivers open, to see that fishermen are walking up and down these rivers to, sh to ensure that there's no poaching going on and to give the rip, like, also to maintain that local knowledge, that local interest, and at the end of the day, the number of fish that sports fishermen take uh, is relatively very small. They're not really a, a huge threat to the salmon population, but poaching, large-scale population with nets, is a threat, and uh, so that's why it's just better to keep fishermen on the river, to keep an eye on what is going on, that the poachers won't take over. So this is not purely political kind of broadcast. It's a matter of personal interest to myself. I do believe I've made suggestions that uh, will or can be found to work. And fishermen must approach the minister, must approach their TDs and councillors and make a case 
that, uh, for some ideas that I've suggested here. So thank you for listening. As I said, this year has been fantastic water, great water, no salmon. And it's the year of 2023. I've heard discussions about it up and down the country from, from Cork up to Donegal, Tyrone, all over the place that uh, there's been a huge fall in the numbers of salmon returning to the rivers this year. And really, it's a huge wake-up call, and we really need to think seriously about having dramatic measures to, to correct something which has seriously gone wrong at sea and in our rivers. So my name is Herman Kelly. I'm president of the Irish Freedom Party. Thank you for listening. Slánis Bannacht.